Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, on this Pentecost Sunday. Amen. How does love work? How does it work? Is it simply a feeling? Or words? Or is it more? And today on Pentecost, we're asking ourselves an even more specific form of that question, which is, do you love God? Well, think about your human relationships. Do you love your husband? Do you love your wife? Do you love your children? Do you love your neighbors? What exactly does that look like? How does it play out in the real world? Does it just exist in your own mind, a feeling that you have internally? Is it just expressed verbally? Or is it lived out? This is a big question for human beings. We sing about love, talk about love, write about love all the time, and everyone has a slightly different definition for what exactly that is referring to. So where do we go in the midst of all that confusion? We go, of course, to our Savior Jesus. And in our Gospel reading today, here's what He says about love. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Period. How do we do that? Or better yet, what does that have to do with Pentecost and the church? Well, you see, on Pentecost, the disciples of Jesus, they received the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, which is kind of cool with our readings today, right? The gospel reading is talking about the reading in Acts. It's the realization of what Jesus is talking about in John 14, the reception of the Holy Spirit. The Helper is coming. The Greek word for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the paraclete, the Helper. But what does the Spirit really help us with is a question we might want to ask ourselves as we celebrate Pentecost. And the answer is that he helps us keep Jesus' word. If you love me, you will keep my word. Now, we get a little bit lost in the translation here from Greek to English. Some of the meaning is a little bit more obscure. The Greek word here used for keep is a bit more specific in Greek than it is in English. You see, I think often when we read this passage, we immediately jump to, we have to obey God perfectly. That's how we keep His Word. But that's really not the meaning behind the Greek here. It's more of guard, attend to carefully, to treasure, to observe. And what exactly does that mean? Well, think about what you do with the things you treasure. If you treasure something, do you hide it away and never look at it, never think about it, only come to it occasionally? Do you ignore it or do you focus on it? Of course, if you treasure something, you don't hide it away and forget about it. It occupies your thoughts. You often want to look at it to make sure it's still there. So Jesus tells us that if we are to love him, we are to treasure his word. So, do you love God? Now remember your human relationships. Do you love your husband, your wife, your kids, your neighbors, co-workers? And what does that look like? Well, the answer, dear friends in Christ, is no. You don't. I don't either. According to our sinful flesh, I do not love God. You do not love God. Is this shocking to learn about yourself? According to our sinful flesh, we don't love God. We weren't looking for Him. We didn't choose Him. We didn't love Him. And just think about what we do to His Word even now. We seek to soften it, 
to twist it, to change it, to match more of what we want our word to be. And when it suits our desires and purposes, we just ignore it completely. Does your Bible have dust on it? Mine does sometimes. How long has it been since you've read on your own at home? The answer is a little bit longer than we'd like to admit sometimes, isn't it? So if that's the case, is there any hope of us loving God? No, there's not. There is none for us. But the reason that today isn't a sad day, that today is a celebration, is that now something has changed. On our own, we do not love God, but we are no longer on our own. Today, we celebrate the changing of this reality. The Helper has arrived. The Holy Spirit has been given. He is here. It is the birth of the church, as our sign indicates. Sorry, we didn't have any cake. But you can go get some to celebrate today if you'd like, because it is a day of celebration. You have received the Holy Spirit. You, the church, have received it. But what does that mean exactly? Well, in verse 26 of our gospel reading, Jesus says this, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Teaching and recalling God's Word. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Word that's talked about here is the whole thing. The Word that tells you you're a sinner. You don't love God. You didn't choose me. But also the word that says, I chose you. I have made you my own. I love you. I have forgiven you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we remember these things. We believe these things. We learn from this word. So according to my sinful flesh, I do not love God. How can I love God? By keeping and treasuring His Word. And how do I do that? Receive the Holy Spirit. who will teach you all things and bring recollection to you of all that I have said to you. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? What a wonderful gift. Where do I get it? might be your next question. And what exactly is it going to do to me? Am I going to start speaking in things I don't understand? Do I have to go to a, a particular city and be in a particular room and wait for a loud rushing wind and the flames of fire on my head? I mean, that would be pretty cool. How many of you have seen that before? Nobody? Oh, you have, huh? Well, you'll have to tell me about that later, because I haven't. So where do we get this Holy Spirit? Well, in Acts chapter 2, when they receive the Holy Spirit, the 12 disciples of Jesus, the church is born and it begins its work immediately. And its work gives us insight into how the Holy Spirit is given now. It's given through the church. It's given through the word of the apostles because the word of the apostles, because of the Holy Spirit, is now the word of Jesus. Because he's bringing to them a recollection, a remembrance of all that Jesus has said to them these many years that he's been on the earth. So if you look at verse 4 in our second reading from Acts chapter 2, it says that the Spirit begins, they speak as the Spirit gives them utterance. Their words are now guided by the Spirit. Peter didn't get up there and open a book and read from the book. He began to speak as the Spirit gave him utterance. And he gave a sermon. So we're once again back to this Word of Jesus. The Word of God, which now through the Holy Spirit, 
The disciples are keeping, guarding, observing, and treasuring. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the proclaiming of this word, some of those who hear it begin to treasure it as well, begin to keep it, to attend to it carefully. So if you're asking yourself, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? You're doing it right now through this Word of God. Faith comes from hearing the Word of God, Paul tells us. Hence why you're here this morning. Or if that's not why you're here, I'm letting you know that that's really why you're here. That's why after each one of our readings, we respond to the gift by saying thanks be to God. For this word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has brought to our remembrance the things that Jesus has said to us. In Lutheran tradition, we call these the means of grace. And through these means, the Holy Spirit works. And in each one of those means, the central feature is the word. Baptism is water plus the word. The Lord's Supper is the bread and wine plus the word and promise of God. And it becomes the body and blood of Jesus. This is the work of the church. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring the word of God to all people. And by the grace of God and the continual working of the Holy Spirit, some of the people whom we proclaim Jesus to believe. And join us in treasuring and keeping his word. So dear friends in Christ, I ask you again, do you love God? Before, the answer was no. Before, we ran away when things got bad and we hid. Before, we denied our knowledge of even knowing Jesus. But now, Now things are different. They're different because you have received the Holy Spirit, the very helper from God Himself, the very real presence of God Himself within you. Right at the beginning of our Gospel reading, He says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Dear friends in Christ, This is your gift from God through the Holy Spirit. He has made His dwelling place in you. Now, we no longer deny, but like the disciples who once were hiding in a room for fear of the Jews, now stand in the midst of a crowd of many people proclaiming Jesus. And so do we proclaim our Lord. Now we do not run away from our Lord, but we cling to Him desperately. Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can say truthfully, I love God. But you might be thinking, well, Pastor, that all sounds really amazing. And I believe it, but there's still one question that I don't really get. You say that to love God, you have to keep His Word, and that now because I've received the Holy Spirit, I can actually do that, but still I find myself ignoring God's Word. Sometimes I follow my own Word. Sometimes I don't keep it and treasure it. What do I do about that? What does that mean? Well, now that you've received the Holy Spirit and you've gathered here today to remember it and hear it and to be taught by it, recall the words of our Lord for you. After all, as recipients of this helper, we can now recall the things that He has said to us. This word does say to us, you are a sinner. You will fail. But I love you. So much so that I sent Jesus to do the very thing you couldn't. You couldn't keep my word. But he did. Perfectly. 100% without fail. In your place. He loved me perfectly and kept my word perfectly. 
He attended to it exactly the way I wanted. And now through the gift of the Holy Spirit and the faith in Jesus he brings, so have you. That's why Jesus says after these words, it's not an imposition of the law that now burdens you beyond your ability to bear. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. In other words, not with conditions or expectations. Not as the world gives, I give to you. So let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. So dear friends in Christ, now that you remember his words, let us go from here emboldened by the Holy Spirit, proclaiming this full word of God so that many more may receive this wondrous gift of the Holy Spirit and have faith in the words of Jesus. That yes, they're a sinner, but a sinner loved and redeemed by God. And now he has made his dwelling place among them. Let them hear this word that comes to sinners and changes them into saints. In the name of Jesus, amen.